And thank you so much to everybody for being here. There's some familiar faces, there's some brand new faces. And I'm trying to see over this. I'm sorry. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, and for those of, for those of you who who know me, and for those of you who are just going to get to know me tonight, I'll I'll introduce myself a little bit and what it is that I do. So as Dana was saying, I am an artist um, and an illustrator, and I am also um, I'm a facilitator and designer of educational program art educational program for individuals for schools for uh, community organizations. Um, this, is, this is my passion. This is what I have been doing from the get-go, you could say. Um, I'm primarily a watercolorist. Um, as you can see, that's, this is some of my work behind me. And this is actually my studio. So those of you who are in my Frank cohort know that this is the view that you guys see. And I try to change it up a little bit for you every time. But I'm so happy to welcome you guys here into my space and into and, and here this evening, you know, into this, you know, this amazing space that has really, I'll tell you about it in a minute, but has really, really guided me through this incredible journey with my creativity. And I'm happy to have you here. And, and thank you all for taking the time for being here this evening. So I create contemporary work that can be really, I guess, best described as visual narratives and meditations, if you will, that explore the themes of love, kindness, gratitude, empowerment, childhood wonder. I do a lot of children's art as well. Um, motherhood, and then my own personal iconography from my background and my traditions. So as I was saying, so like basically I've been painting my whole life. Um, so legend has it, um, I first picked up my watercolors somewhere around the age of five. And like, I just knew it was glee. It was sheer bliss for me. And I guess you could kind of say, well, I knew it was meant to be and then the rest was sort of history. I sold my first commission painting at the age of 17, and I've been on this journey ever since. Um, from, but from a young age, I also wanted to use my work to help empower others and to help them connect to their own voices, their own essence, and the unique creative fire that resides within each of us. So I'm sure you're familiar with her work, but as Elizabeth Gilbert, posits um, in her remarkable Ode to Creativity, which is Big Magic. Um, she also wrote Eat, Pray, Love, among other really great things. Um, if you're alive, you're a creative person. And you know what? I happen to agree with her. And I know that we all have this wonderful innate wisdom within us, but sometimes, sometimes we have to remember that we do. So I want to take a quick show of hands here. Who in this group definitely feels like, yep, I'm a creative. I got this. This is this is my area. Yes. <laughs> no, Emmy. <laughs> what do you mean no? <laughs> Anybody? Okay. All right. So I've got some no's. Okay. So this is good. So that's great. So I guess we're there's a few of us who are going, no, 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 no way. Like, but let's let's see what you have to say here, right? Okay. Well, this this is what I would suggest to all of us, and it's that. Our creativity is definitely something that we can come to hone and that we can come to learn how to use. It's not an obtuse thing. It's not something that's out there outside of ourselves. It's really something that we've actually always had. And the key is in cultivating it. It's tending to it. It's taking care of it. And through this process, we come to know that it's a formidable tool of resilience. And this was made the most prescient to me through, I guess, what you could say is one of the most difficult periods in probably all of our lives, which is essentially the last year and a half of this pandemic. And I will tell you that flourishing in the midst of this chaos became possible for me because of how I chose to engage my creativity. And I'm hopeful that through this account, you will start to see the amazing creative potential that lives within each and every one of us. And even those of you who are skeptical and they think, yeah, nah, okay, I don't possess this. You're gonna to come to realize through this discussion and then through the amazing exercise that we're gonna do, that it's alive and well, but it might just be buried a little bit deeper than you might think, a little bit under the surface. So how did 
an artist seek refuge literally right here in her studio during a global pandemic. So I'm just gonna take one second to turn our slides on and you'll have to forgive me for one second here. Okay, here we go. Dana, does this work for everybody? Good. Okay, amazing, thanks. Okay, so I keenly remember the moment um, as everything really started to shut down and we found ourselves in isolation, right? I think we can all relate to this. And I remember saying to somebody very dear to me that, you know what, if I don't keep working, I'm just gonna cry all the time. Like I'm, I'm gonna fall apart. And oh boy, did I cry. And I cried a lot and I still do. And I, and I meant it. But what I realized was that it didn't mean so much. I, I realized I didn't mean so much that I needed to keep working. Although of course all of us did and all of us had to attempt to thrive and you know maintain ourselves in our, our businesses, our lives, our work, our families, our everything. But what I meant was I needed to stay connected. And what I needed to stay connected to in the midst of that chaos, beyond family, beyond friends, beyond community, was myself. And the only way that I've ever really known how to do that was through my creativity. And by placing myself in its space, by staying in its calming, soothing, peaceful arms, I needed to feel grounded so that I could feel tethered to something outside of the uncertainty that was around us so that I could move forward even though the world was standing still. But this is something that I've engaged before because I can honestly tell you that in the most difficult times that I've faced, my creativity has really been there for me. It's been the source of my own personal resilience, honestly, since I was a child. So I knew what I had to do. I began to paint, I began to practice, I began to show up every day. And I created a lot of work and a lot of work like you saw behind me and now a lot of work like you're gonna see on the screen based on text and words, which are things that have always fascinated me and have always been in my work. And they kind of served, I guess, if you will, as visual prayers, reminders for all of us that we are loved, to be kind, to be grateful, even in the midst of what we're all going through. And they really encapsulate to me the meaning of these visual narratives and meditations in their painted words. And that's really the basis, a big basis of my work. I created also as well figures that, well, you see some of them behind me, I'm gonna show you some more, that were calm and peaceful, women and children who could maintain their meditative and intuitive gaze because they were connected, like I needed to be connected to their inner stillness and that inner knowing. And essentially, I guess I, you could say I looked to them to show me what to do. And at first, it was just for me, right? This was my practice. This was how I was ushering in my resilience from my creativity. It was keeping me grounded. It was keeping me going. It was keeping me working. But I realized really quickly into it that this was not just for me. I wanted these works to be helpful, to be helpful to others and to inspire and maybe bring some people some peace. And it was way, 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 way bigger than I had anticipated. And it was bigger than me. And slowly but surely, as I began to share them, I realized that they were becoming tools. Basically, you know, for anyone that needed space to be held for them, visually, meditatively, lovingly, so they could pause, they could look at something inspiring and beautiful, and they could shift their day. And I heard, and I do hear over and over from people. I mean, I really, really do. And like, this is the part that makes me feel the most validated as an artist and as a creator, because people tell me that through looking and seeing my work, you know, they've had a rough day, they go and look at my work, they feel better. Something changes, something shifts. They actually can stop, they can breathe, they can pause. Like it, it provides them that, I mean, that space. And when they, when they tell me this, you know, and it eases, that it eases their hearts, you know, in very tough moments. And to me, I'll be honest, that means everything. 
that's an act of kindness that is as much for myself and the creating them as for the viewer because in that act of sharing we connect and, and to me that's really profound i also began teaching online so i taught classes for kids i taught i taught classes for adults i pivoted and i really kept going i'm just going to show you something else that happened here so my i as i got into this I also started working with a wonderful magazine called Live Magazine, and my work appeared in two issues. Um, the first issue is issue number five, and this is my piece, Tenderness, that's actually in real time behind me as well. And there was a short piece that I wrote that accompanies this as well as you can see. I'll, I'll read it to you in, about, in, in a second. Um, and it was really, really meaningful because it was all about the, the, what does love look like to you? And it was the questions that the editors had put forward and they wanted visual answers and they wanted written answers. And to me, it was such a beautiful question at the time and very, very meaningful because I really felt that it was something that we needed. I think as human beings, we need to be reminded, especially at this particular time, you know, that love still existed. And that meant a lot. So I wrote the following, right? So what does love look like to me? For me, it's a color. It informs everything I do and everything I create. Love is the central theme of all my work. It's the source of my iconography. And it's really true because it is. It speaks to my heart and that's how I create. It's that which I try to convey through form, wash, meaning and color. And I could go on. So then I collaborated with the editors again and we in this in this issue um i had my piece which is called resilience of the heart in the studio and at the time we published three of the paintings in the series and you, you have them here so the first one is the title piece which is resilience of the heart the second one with the infant is gentle wisdom and then the three friends are friendship of the heart and i, I wrote this about this particular series and I think it really resonates with what we're talking about. Resilience of the heart echoes the renewal and blossoming of spring and Passover because this was a Passover issue as well. These figures emerge from the slumber of winter in self-awareness and empowered discovery. The deep knowledge of the self and our interconnectivity guides them on their paths. The season reminds us that we can overcome even the most trying times. These paintings are gentle reminders of our inner wisdom, our strength, and love. And they're also really special pieces to me because these figures turn inward in their strength, and they also turn to each other. And to me, that epitomizes resilience. And how is that brought forth? And it's through creativity. So back to the question that I posed to you earlier, which is, do you think you're creative? And what does it mean? So do you have a deep desire to make stuff? Do you have a desire to paint, to draw, to dance? Do you love to write? Do you love tending to your garden? Do you make stuff for the people you love or do you simply love making stuff, right? Because that's pretty great if you really love making stuff. Does it move you or do you think, nope, this isn't for me? Well, either way, as I think we kind of touched on very, very early on before or for a minute, which is that maybe you have been engaging your creativity, but you're doing it in a way that maybe you didn't recognize because it's not traditional. Maybe you're not making stuff per se, but you're problem solving at work. You're helping your team see different sides of a dilemma. You're pivoting your business. You're helping your colleagues. You're finding new ways of adapting. You're homeschooling and you're working from home. You're re-envisioning your environment to fit all the aspects of your life because, right, we're not working from home anymore, we're working with home, as Esther Pearl would say. You're coordinating your kids' schedules. You're trying to balance self-care and productivity. You're trying to find ways to rest. And you're making lunches and you're making your life run. And that's creativity at its finest. So what, how, sorry, why, why is that? And how do we expand on that and how does it nourish all the aspects of our lives? So Julia Cameron, who is the author of The Artist's Way, which some of you may be familiar with, this is a quintessential tome on creativity and creative spirit. 
describes the following. When we survey our lives, she writes, seeking to fulfill our creativity, we often see that we had a dream that went glimmering because we believed and those around us believed that the dream was beyond our reach. Many of us should have been, might have been, done, tried stuff if, if we had known who we really were. And if, I would add to that, we had known that this skill was one to be nurtured and that it was within us. So what do I mean by that? Well, I think one of the most valuable things is that creativity is sort of this magical vehicle, if you will, through which we can discover ourselves. We can connect to our authenticity and to our inner knowing. Like we knew it as kids, right? I mean, we knew we didn't even question it. And then somewhere along the way, you know, we, we kind of started to forget. And the world makes it hard to keep that spark glowing but it's in there. So how do we find it? How do we make it shine? And if Gilbert suggests, you know, well, the universe, as she writes, very strange jewels deep within us all, and then stands back to see if we can find them. Well, then how do we find them? Like, is there a map? Is there a GPS? Is there a ways for creativity? Well, there sort of is. And here's what we can do to foster our resilience and this is what I'm gonna briefly describe to you. So here, as I was thinking about doing this, I was thinking about giving you guys actionable strategies. I wanted to come up with three things that have really worked for me and three things that I think you can definitely take and apply, whether you feel you're creative or you don't feel you're creative, and it's gonna sort of get those juices flowing. So the first thing, and I, I can't stress this enough, is be consistent. And we, we know this, right? We show up for ourselves. And showing up for ourselves and for our growth is the key to engaging our creativity. You know, like there's this precept in yoga, if any of you are familiar. All you really need to do is show up, right? Beyond that, there's really nothing beyond that. The point is that you make the commitment and you're making the commitment to yourself. And that's the effort. So that's how I show up and how, how I have strategized showing up in my artistic practice, in my studio practice, in my business. And I know that I have to do that in order to grow and I have to do it daily. So, you know, as Gilbert also says, right, it's a simple and generous rule of life that whatever you practice, you'll improve at. And the practice of cultivating our creativity as a skill takes work. It takes time, not necessarily a lot of time, but it takes a commitment. And ultimately the commitment there that we're making is really to ourselves. So maybe it's 10 minutes in the morning writing in a journal. Maybe it's buying art supplies like you guys did for tonight, which is completely and utterly amazing. Showing up for this session because you're curious and you wanna see what this is about. You know, being engaged, open and ready to learn, now, whether it's watering your flowers, taking a photograph, cooking a meal, pick whatever you decide it's going to be, it's an investment in you. And that investment increases in value over time as you discover and you connect more with yourself. So that kind of brings us to the second thing. And the second thing, you're probably like, what the? Let's go do something else. You're like, wait, what do you, what do you mean go do something else? You just told me to be consistent. What, what are you talking about? Well, I do mean be consistent, but here's the thing. There's a little bit of a twist. So there's this really fun anecdote about Da Vinci and how Da Vinci could be seen doing a lot of things. He could be off in his garden. He could be working on his inventions. He could be doodling somewhere. But one of the last things you'd ever actually see him do, believe it or not, is work on any art. And people used to think that he was completely crazy. But it turns out he was, like we know, quite the genius because he was practicing something that Adam Grant sort of touches on, which is selective. And I'm gonna say this very, very strategically. It's selective and strategic procrastination. Why did he do this? 
do you ever notice sometimes when, you know, people say, I, I need to circle back to that idea. I don't have it just yet. Like here it is, but it's over here and it's got to marinate and it's got to percolate. And I kind of need to wait till it's ready. Well, that's sort of the process. And that's a very, very creative act. Because what you're doing is you're allowing that thought to process. Well, you rest your brain and you go and do something else. And in the act of something else, you're actually working that out. So it's a really great way to use that for your mind to take the stress off and to actually allow your creativity to flourish. And that kind of brings us to the third point. And the third point is let go of the need to be perfect. And I can't tell you how many times I've watched students from five to 85 say, oh my God, I have to start this again because it's not perfect. This isn't good enough. So throw it out. It's not good. Like, am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? I hear this all the time. Am I doing this right? Is this okay? Of course you're doing it right because you're doing it and nobody can do it the way you do. And that's sort of the point. So when we let go of this need for it to be perfect, like, you know, Gilbert says this too, better done than perfect. Because if we keep waiting for it, this elusive perfect, it's never going to get done. If we're looking to express ourselves, nobody can express ourselves like us, right? That's a superpower. That's what we each have, what we each possess. And it's an incredible, beautiful thing. And that's your creative spark. And that's sort of what I want you guys to keep in mind as we get into our, our project tonight, because I don't want you to try to make it perfect. I don't want you to try to make it like the one I'm gonna show you or what you've seen here. I want you to really feel that it's you. So remember, you and your creativity are beautiful and they're beautiful works in progress. So with that, we're gonna go back to our supplies and we're gonna get into our assignment for tonight. So I'm gonna just take a second to reduce this. I'm gonna stop the share. Sorry, this is, there we go. Hello, we're back. Um, and what I'm gonna invite you to do before we sort of get to our supplies is I just wanna take a second because I want us to arrive back here together before we start to create. And if you would like, I would invite you to just close your eyes just for a moment. Take a really, really, really deep breath, like a nice inhale and really feel it and bring it all the way down to your belly and then all the way down to your toes. Let it sit there for a minute. And I want you to bring it back to your heart. And I ask you all to come with an open heart for a reason, because that's the place and the space that we're gonna be creating from. And that's the place that I really try to create from. When I put myself in my heart, I know that I'm really listening and I'm really doing my job. And that's something super important. So while we're breathing into our hearts, I want you to imagine that you're asking a question. And the question is, how do I nourish my creativity? And this question, you're going to answer with a word. Whatever that word might be, whatever comes to mind, don't overthink it in any way. But that word is going to be the subject of our project for tonight. And while we're there and while we're in our hearts, and we have our word. Also, I want you to look around and see if there's a specific color or colors that come to mind and how they make you feel. And this is also going to be the information that we're going to use for our project. So if you have your word, if you have your colors, take a nice, beautiful inhale in and open your eyes. Beautiful. And now we're going to come back to our supplies. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Okay, I'm just going to gather mine as you gather yours. One of my paintbrush is making noise. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to scoot this over so that you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm going to bring this back into the frame. And you guys tell me. And everybody sort of see. Hold on one second. I'm going to make sure this works. Aha. Is that good for everybody? 
Yeah, it's okay. All right, because it, it's more important you see that than you see me right now. So what I did was I actually prepared just two examples, just as a little bit of a sketch for you guys. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. You can do, you can draw, start to draw your word any way you want. You can, it can be like sort of more of a lettering like this. I have two words prepared for you because I, I did this meditation earlier and I wanted to make sure that I was able to kind of show you and guide you where you needed to go. And it's my other one. So I'd like you to take your pencils and to try to center it in the middle of your page. And again, don't worry if it's perfect. Don't worry how it looks. Draw them any way that you feel. But try, if you want, to leave enough room because we are going to start painting the interior and the inside of them as well. So take a few minutes to do them. By the way, guys, if you want to um, take your mutes off and you want to ask me any questions, I, I'm here to help you. That's the point. So I, I do this with, uh, with all my classes at this point. If, you, if you'd like to, to unmute, please do. Please feel free to. I invite you to do that. Sorry, do you mind moving it closer? I can't really see. Of what course, you not a problem. It. Sorry, negotiating angles. Is that a little bit better? What does it say, love? I can't really Yes, see. it does. Yeah, oh, okay. the one was kindness and this one is love. If you want me to show okay. you the other one, I'm happy to um, do that as well. Okay. Thank okay. you. You're very, very welcome. And if there were any images that, that uh, occurred to you while you were looking there and looking at your word, that these are just, these are some of the, uh, this is some of the iconography that I use because I'm really drawn to nature and I'm drawn to the cherry blossoms and the dragonflies. So that's a lot of things that come up in my work, but by all means, you know, please interject with your own because again, this is all about you and what you want to connect to. And when, when you're kind of done with the drawing, let me know and I'm, we're going to start doing a little bit of painting and I'll show you what we mean. What I mean, I should say. Are we supposed to be just drawing the word or drawing things around it? Both, by all means, okay. both. If you want to move from the word, yeah, go for it. And when you Federica, guys are done, yes. Do you have any tips on drawing? human figures? Yes, faces. absolutely. Um, what you would need is, is kind of to, um, well, for perspective wise, it, are you trying to do the face or you're trying to do the body? I was actually going to try to do the back of a head because I think that's all I can handle today. <laughs> okay. It's, no, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you would just do the outline of the hair and make it into one particular shape and then you would detail the hair itself. Does that make sense? Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome, my pleasure. So how's everybody doing? <laughs> it's okay, okay, and it doesn't have to look like this, right? Okay, so does everybody it doesn't have <laughs> Yeah, what? <laughs> I said it doesn't. What? <laughs> no, it's okay. Does everybody kind of have their colors in mind too that came up with their words? Yep, okay, amazing. So I'm actually, I've got my colors too. And you're gonna be super surprised that I'm gonna go for some pink. <laughs> I'm gonna grab this. Has anybody here painted with watercolor before? Nope, not so much, but yes. Yeah. Okay, amazing. Have you, Emmy, have you painted with acrylic by any chance or with anything in particular? Nope. Okay. I painted walls a lot. Painted walls a lot. Okay, well, that's good experience too. That's great. So what I want to show you is you really, you do, when you're using watercolor, we don't use, we don't need a lot of pigment. We don't need a lot of paint. Like okay. on my brush, you can kind of see, I don't really have a lot of pigment. We don't need it. But the key is our water because our water does two things for us. It not, doesn't just clean our brushes, but it also acts as a conduit. So it thins out the paint. So we get those beautiful wash effects, you know, like in the sun mm -hmm. behind you, like the way that is called a variegated wash, the way that's made is because we've used a lot of water and we've saturated the tones. Okay. So I actually want to give you like an example of that. So what I'm gonna do is if you guys can see, sorry, I am a lefty. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna paint one of the cherry blossoms for you to see. You see, I'm using my paint pretty light. 
and I'm using my water to kind of like pull my paint and give me these really beautiful washes so we're kind of moving all the way around now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a second tone and again like this is going to be whatever you guys want it to be but just to kind of show you this is called a wet in wet technique and then this moves both of our colors into each other and the water kind of does the magic does this make sense to everybody mm -hmm. yeah okay so you can start doing that with the color that you chose whether it's in the letters themselves or it's in wherever you want to spotlight it in the um imagery that you choose to go around it with or it can be in your background as well my suggestion in this instance because we're dealing with like wet stuff is start from the middle of your work and then kind of move outward so that way it gives the center a chance to dry and that enables us to start working on other areas and if you guys want to show me where you're at i'd be more than happy to have a look and help you also okay Dana, how you doing? <laughs> Let me see. I can't see her. That's good. <laughs> We're just starting. It's good. It's good. It's good. Keep going. Hey, Bella. Bell. Everybody okay? I'm okay. so sorry about that. I Pam, was that you? <laughs> yes, I'm trying to get more water for my daughter, oh. like watercolor. Oh my goodness, don't worry about it. It's totally fine. Glad you're here. So how's everybody doing? You want to give me a, a quick a quick view of what you're working on? If you need any help, but if you're concentrating, just concentrate. Oh, amazing. You guys are doing so great. This is fantastic. Okay. Is everybody having fun? I hope a little bit. Yes. Are we are we watercoloring now? We're just kind of going at our own pace. Okay. <laughs> By all means, go at your own pace. This is it's not a race. It's gonna take your time. But yes, if you'd like to start putting your colors in, by all means, that's a great thing to do. And mine, I'm just kind of like gonna go into it, sort of like a garden. I'm gonna use like super super light strokes here. So we're gonna, and this is. There we go. Sorry. And then it's just sort of like mixing it together like this. And that's sort of the beauty of this too. Like as I was saying, you know, you can blend your colors, use lots of water. Your water is really your friend. Like when I'm teaching classes for kids, I explain to them how in watercolor water really becomes like another friend because it's just going to help you do everything. And you sort of we can go around and we can make this whatever we want because of our expression. And again, it does not need to be perfect. It does not need to look like this. It can look like however you want it to look because it's yours. And that's what's important. Frederica, I thought it was really interesting how you equated or described how creativity isn't only like the act of making art, but how we use creativity kind of in the business world or at work. And I'm wondering if, if anyone else, um, you know, has thought of that before. It's, it was something that was totally new to me to think about problem solving and creativity and art, like to see the link Together. between the, the concepts. And I'm wondering, um, maybe Jen, if you're not too deep in concentration, I'm wondering how you use your creativity at work. Jen is, is uh, in a very structured business world. She can tell you a little bit about it, but I'm curious to know how, how finance and, and creativity work together. Uh, well, I'm in a role, like a transformation role. So I'm right now I'm working with a bunch of data scientists and I guess my creativity is more so kind of the problem solving and figuring out how to change things. And mo like I design models and I design models to predict client profitability and things. So I think there's a lot of, it's not very structured because you have to be pulling things in from various pieces to design something to work. So I don't know. Do you consider it's, it to be a creative process? That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think so. Like, well, like, so as a kind of a side thing, like I took photography lessons in my twenties and I'm really into um, photography and stuff. So I see that as a creative thing. I took piano lessons when I was growing up. So I see that as more of the arts thing. Um, so I think like in finance, it's more structured, but in my role, because I kind of have free reign on how I design things and I have to design things to work and to work efficiently. I think there's a lot of, there's no rules around it. So I think you do have to be creative and you do have to be thinking outside of the box to be able to kind of pull things together to kind of make things work. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. That's, I I appreciate that insight because like it, it makes sense to me as well, because when we're creating or when you're, when you're problem solving, you have to often look at new structures, right? We can't always use a predictive model as you're saying you know you can't always use you know something that's been done before sometimes we often you know we need to be original we need to look outside the box we need to figure out well you know what's a new system of being and for me and I know I'm not the only one that posits that but for me I think that's across the board and the more we can do that and the more we utilize that regardless of of our field the more we're, we're nurturing ourselves and maybe, and then the more we actually, as you're saying, like you had more traditional creative pursuits in your photography and in other things, but it blends and it comes together because it's all part of you. Mm-hmm. And that's a beautiful expression of that, I think. It really mm-hmm. is. And I'll, I'll put the same question also to Emmy. So she works in a creative type company. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the way you guys use creativity? Sure. Uh, so I work for a children company and we, I'm in the product development department. So, um, well, we use our creativity really by looking, there's a lot of observation, I would say, like looking, like seeing what people do, how do people interact? What do they use? What do they need? Um, so I would say it's a lot of uh, and we have to be creative in a way of finding different ways to make a product that already exists probably greater. So it's always like that way of looking at what is it missing? What what could make it greater? Um, so I would say that's where, and also like we make packaging, we make the photography for the packaging or for the catalog. So it's always about like getting the right angle, what makes it pops, what makes it talk. Um, what, what makes the customer like, you know, what speaks to them. So I would say that's, that's really how we, we tend to our creativity. Thank you for sharing that. We have have a really nice mix of uh, backgrounds here in the room tonight. Michelle, how does creativity play into your work day? It's all about finding a way to, to provide the right message to my team. I have quite a large team. I have 900 people and I need wow. to be able to reach those 900 people. So it has to be adjusting the message to make sure that they can, they can um, make sense of it all for themselves. So sometimes it's really adapting the communication based on if I'm putting myself in their shoes would I understand what I'm saying or is it too technical or is it too like strategic and I need to really, I don't want to say dumb it down. It's not dumb it down, but find an example that's going to speak to them according to the work that they do on a daily basis because I have a lot of different levels in my organization. So if you're a phone rep, you need to understand what I'm trying to tell you. But if you're a manager or a senior manager, it needs to have meaning for you. So I really use... uh, communication through PowerPoint sometimes, or sometimes it'll be like in a podcast format, like just a voice message or in a video, depending on the message I'm trying to provide to them Hmm. would be how I use my creativity. Yeah, I don't know if I would normally, when I, when I think about your brand, she works for a very, very large company. Uh, Can we name drop Michelle? Yeah, 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 we can. (laughs) <laughs> she works for I, uh, I keep the lights Mac. on <laughs> so it's not something that I typically you know equate to to creativity so it's interesting to see how that plays out and then we have someone like Tamara who um is definitely a creative soul 
You want to tell us a little bit about your use of creativity? Um, yeah, it's it, it's changed a lot over over the last handful of years because I went from very practical uses of creativity, like painting. Um, I painted a lot when I was when I was younger. And uh, now I turned into what I call a pixel pusher. So I do all of my art online. Um, and I think what's sort of interesting is that I don't really consider myself, uh, I work in a creative field, but I don't consider myself to be the quintessential creative. I'm a little bit more Cartesian, but I think that the creative process, what's interesting about it and what I've taken away from, from doing fine arts when I was younger is the opportunity to get myself unstuck. So when I'm stuck with something, even if it's a, a business question or um, if it's a software coding question, or if I just can't quite see what the solution is, I find I tend to lean on some of my creative skills to get myself unstuck. Um, and so a lot of what you were mentioning about uh, doing something else, um, changing my medium sometimes. So if I'm working online and I really can't quite solve a problem through a creative uh, endeavor, I will try and just get off of the medium that I'm working on, which is my computer. Um, for me, I have a tendency to, you know, organize something and then all of a sudden those creative juices kind of um, keep going. Silly things like... Um, yeah, just tending. I think it's also the manual pursuit of keeping your hands busy um, has a tendency to unlock the brain, especially when you're doing something repetitive, like what everyone's doing right now. Exactly. It allows space in your brain. It sort of like shifts your brain into a different mode. Um, so the classic creativity, I think that I've sort of lost it and I, um, I regret that a bit, but I think it's just sort of transformed into another way. Mm -hmm. And it's more than just problem solving. It's about, it's about getting yourself unstuck. And exactly. the other thing that I thought was interesting about some of uh, the comments too was um, in order to feel creative in non-creative fields, you have to, um, there's a word I'm trying to think of it in, in English, maîtriser les outils. You really have to know the capacity of the, of the tools you're working with. So whether you're doing, um, whether you're doing uh, forecasting or whether you're doing anything that's sort of in that creative realm, it means that you have a mastery over the basics um, because we can't become creative about, uh, I don't know, financial planning if we don't master some of the basics and allow those wheels to spin on their own. So I thought that also I've noticed is that you need, you need some sort of, you need to have practiced a lot of your basic skills to really find the creativity where you seemingly don't think there should be any. I, I agree with you and I'm glad that I'm, thank you for putting that so eloquently in terms of how this all resonates because it's really true. And that's, I, this, I shared that with you, with you all because that's something that really works for me too because as you're saying, it, it is very much about being unstuck. And when that idea is stuck and it doesn't wanna move and we, we, can't, we have to let it be, we have to let it be there even though we've got deadlines and even though we have to figure it out but you're right, especially for me too, like in terms of, the, of you know, keeping your hands busy, when you're occupied and your brain is free, it can solve it. And that's an incredible, it's an incredible tool and, and skill to have. And, and it, it works, it works across all fields. Can I just get, um, Dana, do we have a couple minutes where I know you're all painting beautifully and you're really taking your time and it's amazing. I was just wondering if we might have like a minute or two just to kind of talk about what everybody's word is, if they don't mind sharing, because I, yeah, I would love fantastic. to know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Stacey, do you want to tell us what you're working on? If you don't mind. <laughs> I am in the zone. I know I see. <laughs> you put me in the zone. Uh, breathe. Breathe. Mm -hmm. I love that. Beautiful. And what was what, what are your colors, Stace? Well, I always tend to go for like the blues and the greens. Okay. But I added some purples and you know, it's gloomy outside, so I added some purples and some 
jewel tones. You found your jewels. You found your yes. jewels, as as uh, Elizabeth Gilbert says. They're right. Our jewels buried within us. Yes, your words were very inspiring, Frederica. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Who else? Pam, I don't know if you're painting or if you're listening. Me? Pamela. Oh, Pam, sorry. I heard <laughs> no, Pam. Okay. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm catching yeah. up on the painting. <laughs> I'll, I'll fill you in after. <laughs> it's okay. Laura, I'm you doing, wanna... I have good water tone. I've got awesome watercolor, so I'm just doing some. Let me see. Things okay. Get me started. Oh, no, don't be impressed. No, yeah, no. Come on. <laughs> but I'm just, but it's, I haven't done this in a five years. So this is a wonderful opportunity and experience. Thank Good. you. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Well, just, just to like, what, what we were doing was we were just talking about, we did like a quick little meditation where we kind of went inside and went into our hearts. Cause you know, I asked everybody to come with an open heart and in order to find a word that was going to inspire us on how each one of us needed to be connected to our creativity. So that's the word that we're trying to sort of seek and illustrate with a color that really means something to you and that you can kind of see in there and any other images or things you want to put in. So it's up to you. Perfect. Well, not even knowing that background, my word with been growth and my color is green, which is very appropriate Perfect. for the growth. So thanks. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Well done. <laughs> Laura, do you want to share? So my word is dirty. Okay. Um, <laughs> Love it. <laughs> my colors are kind of indigo and purple, and then I'm going to mix in actually some neutrals, some browns. Um, a lot of what I do in just being one of two people running a business is having like a white knuckle clench of control <laughs> over everything. Um, and I feel like in order for us to kind of be successful in the business, I'm always having to be super a million percent present and kind of always convincing myself that I'm in control and, and behaving that way and actually being that way. And I, for me creatively, I really have to just let go of the idea again of perfection. And I just want to get dirty. Um, I really want to start making my own dyes because I do some fabric art and I was actually Googling indigo dye today. I want to grow my own indigo and make my own dye. And I was seeing all of these pictures of it. And these people who make the dye are just so dirty and covered in <laughs> pigment stain. And it stresses me out so bad. Um, but I think I, I could really get there creatively if I could just kind of let go a little bit, let go of that control. It sounds like a phenomenal pursuit. It really does. And it's very, you know, like there was a time where we couldn't go to our stores and buy pigments, right? We had to crush them from stones and from gems and from, you know, all plants and all kinds of things. And yeah, it was dirty, but it was probably a lot of fun. <laughs> so oh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid you. to get dirty. I like, I like very clean, creative processes. I've, I've been doing graphic design my whole career, which is not dirty at all. Nope. Um, <laughs> nope. So yeah, but back when I was in art school, back when I was in my like undergrad, all we did was get dirty charcoal and ink and all this stuff everywhere. And I look back to the work I did then and it was, I mean, it wasn't amazing, but it was definitely loose and free and there was some good stuff in there. I'm hoping to get that back. Well, I, I think that even the fact that you're acknowledging it and you're saying it out loud is such <laughs> an important thing. Because, you know, you're saying, okay, you know, I need this back. I need this back in my life. I need this back in my process. And it will only, it, like, you know this, it will only help you in everything else that you do. Exactly. And, and it'll fuel you. So I, I think it's amazing. And I'm so glad that you're here tonight because, like, you just took a step forward in doing this. And that's phenomenal. It's and your fun. meditation is phenomenal. I mean, it was so Thank you. Simple. And so clear and like the word just appeared and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to fail at this. <laughs> there is no failing at this. This is, this right. is you. You can't fail at you. That's the point. Right. <laughs> no, no. Oh, thank you. Thank you for guiding us. Well, you're, you're, it's my absolute pleasure. Thank you for being here. It's wonderful. Really, really wonderful. Sky, I'm curious to know what you're working with. Yeah. So the word that popped into my head was grounded just sort of like being present and staying in the present moment I'll show like what I have so far I don't I, I don't have watercolors I only have markers but like that's I just, perfect isn't I it just, like, beautiful and, yeah 
grounded. So that's what I went for. That's fantastic. Thank you. And what a great message too, right? Because we need that. We need that to be present and we need it to do what we do. And we need it to connect. And it's, it's a fantastic, it's a fantastic one. Anyone else? Not that I want to bother anybody deep in thought here and deep in process, because I know how unfair that is. <laughs> Working. My word is bubble. I noticed your word was bubble. Tell me why your yeah. word is bubble. Because <laughs> for me, if I'm in my own little world, like my bubble is where I find that I create more things. I see more clearly. I need the quiet. So I need my space. Mm. So bubble <laughs> was the word that came to my, my mind when you were guiding us through this meditation. I think it's wonderful. And that, 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 that resonates for me too, because my process too does depend on having quite a bit of quiet, even though it's chaotic always. Mm -hmm. But if I can find the space, even in the midst of that to go, okay, I can be here. Even, you know, when my son's playing video games and everything is loud and everything is crazy, you know, we, we still, we can, we can find it. And when we find it, our heads are clear and our hearts are clear and then we can kind of do anything I think so I feel I used to find it every day because on the drive to work was my quiet time and yes. coming home was my quiet time and now there's no quiet time no because there's no there's there's no more we don't pause anymore no that's it and I have three kids they're older and I have a dog so it's always somebody somebody <laughs> something yeah somebody <laughs> wants something somebody needs something somebody running here running there yep that I totally yeah. understand but maybe this will give you that bubble back maybe it will just go you know and use that meditation anytime right just just go in go into your heart and be grounded there be centered there find yourself there if you ever find yourself needing to come back right needing to come back to that awareness and it'll it'll guide you back every time it really will Dana, can I see what you're doing? <laughs> sure. So my word was grow. Okay. I, the last second, I opted not to try to do humans and, and just. Okay, do I'll have to give you a tutorial. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's pretty. You see it. Okay, so, I love your colors. I did hearts, oh. and you know, I love it. Literal growing plants, vines. Beautiful, really beautiful, and very fitting in every way. It really is. I, I, okay, I promise you a class on human figures. <laughs> <laughs> Emmy, what are you? Stacy, say hi to Amber. <laughs> Emmy, what are you doing? I, I don't think I saw yours. No. No, I don't want me to. Never mind. You're not going to see mine. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's fine. You're here. You're doing. It's all good. That's <laughs> it. I, I'm. I'm here. I'm trying. And I, I know you're word, trying. <laughs> my <laughs> word was surroundings. Surroundings was my like was crazy. Was your word? Yeah, it was my word. Okay, that's a beauty. That's a beautiful <laughs> word, and that can mean so many things, and can be so many different colors, and express yeah. so many different feelings. And I think that's amazing because that Thank speaks you. to what our environment looks like and it speaks to how our creativity affects our environment so that's pretty on point and quite wonderful Thank you but i like it it's fun okay good i'm very <laughs> glad i'm really 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 glad it's wonderful you guys are doing great are you enjoying working with the water and working with the color yeah. and the way i described it to you so you understand like how it's kind of like it flows and we let the water do the work for us in a lot of instances. It's very like forgiving. This, yes. <laughs> it's very forgiving. It, it I'm using be. the water to sort of smooth out any rough edges that I'm, I've <laughs> exactly. created. Yeah. And, and the thing is too, like we can do, I'll just show you quickly, just like a super quick technique. Um, like, let's say we wanted to do something. This is called a variegated wash. So we would go from super dark. Can we see? I hope everybody mm -hmm. can see. So this is dark. And then I add my water and I start pulling my water out and it gets lighter and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter until I need more water, sorry, until basically there's almost no more color. And that's a technique that I use a lot, which is to do this in my layers, in my background, in my washes. And then what's also really nice 
is that let's say I wanted to take another color like a blue and I just I let it sort of mingle and I let it hang out and do this kind of magical thing where it starts to blend and this is sort of how I build my layers and my washes like you were asking me okay when it comes to figures let's say faces they're not flat there's always different layers and there's always different wash of color so you may think that something is like a light skin tone but you may start with a blue or a purple to put in like hollows of cheeks or eyes or you know and then you would build and build and build and build and that's called glazing when we're working in watercolor and all of a sudden it's like there's a sculpture and you've built mm. a face so it's all those little things that kind of make it fun and magical Does every, anybody have any questions or want any help or we're just happy doing, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, what's next week's uh, session and tutorial, Frederica? Uh, well, we can discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> we could do still life. We could do like, there's, I, I have a whole itinerary, don't worry. <laughs> With pleasure. Just glad you guys are, are enjoying and connecting because that's the best. And it's a nice reprieve too, right? Because we're, we're, we're thinking about things in a different way and we're working in a different way and we're connected in a different way. And lo and behold, you're all being very creative right now. So you may have come in with one assumption about yourselves, but I think you're leaving with a different perspective. Mm. So that's kind of interesting too, right? The way we can shift that. Yes, because again, it's not about being perfect. It's about doing it and everybody's doing it, which I think is amazing. You should be very proud of yourselves. It's pretty, pretty great. I have a question about your process. Uh, all of your work has this very like uh, romantic, dreamy quality to it. Um, if you're, let's say, in like a different mood, if you're, if you're <laughs> aggravated, <laughs> if you're, if you're upset, like, like does, does it affect like the style of, of your art? Funny enough, it brings me back to myself. So it, I, I, I don't bring that into my work. Not that I can't like, not that I have to make, a, you know, paintings that are, that are light or that are, you know, that's, it's not the point. I've, I've painted in, in plenty of moods and had to show up that, that were not necessarily the best. But what happens is if I let the process take over properly, I let it reground me and recenter me and I, I come back to where I should be. So it's, it's very soothing to me in that way. So um, <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't usually, if anything, it's the opposite. It puts me back in, into where I'm supposed to be. So I'm thankful for that too, because it helps. Can you tell us a little bit about art as, um, as a business? Absolutely. Um, it's complicated. Um, there's a lot of different parts to it. And it's not just, you know, being off in the studio doing, you know, there's so many other aspects, right? There's the media aspect, there's the PR aspect, there's selling aspect, there's working with clients, there's, you know, there's doing commissions, there's programming and what's, but the beauty of it, at least I find for me, is that I get to use it as the basis for so many different types of things. So it becomes kind of like an adventure because there's multiple ways that I, that I use my art in my business. Uh, as I said, I may use it as programming. I may use it as illustrations. I may use it as murals. I may use it as going into schools. I may use it as, you know, a gift for an individual that somebody commissioned me for. Um, there's so many different ways to actually be able to share it and actually be able to inspire people and through writing as well, because I'm still, I'm writing about my art. Um, I'm actually, I'm a trained art historian as well. So I have a, a huge background in that. So being able to look at art and being able to create it and write about it and produce it and help people with it, if you will, and actually be able to share it in so many different ways. That's what my whole business is based on. So it's, it makes it, even though, yeah, there's lots of tedium because we still, you know, there's always the minutia and there's always the everyday of what we have to do. But ultimately, I use it as the guiding force for everything that I do. So that, mm. and that just makes it an adventure and a half, I guess. 
Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing this with us. It's really interesting to hear how you're about your process and uh, I'm actually quite pleased with what I painted. So. Well, you should be. <laughs> I'm happy. I hope everyone's going to uh, share some some photos of, of their final cool. creations with us in the Facebook group uh, or even on Instagram if you're so feeling so bold and brave. Um, I'd love to see it. Yeah, so would I. Very, very much so. Well, I want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you for taking the time. I know it's like it's late and it's a long day and I'm glad you also made the time for yourselves you know, and, and you were able to be here and explore this and I hope you take it further and, and keep going if it interests you and if it feels good and if you, you know, if you enjoy it, because it's, it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. And it's, these are amazing skills to have. And I, I think they're going to serve you in connecting to yourself. So thank you for being here with me and allowing me to help you with that. And it's just a pleasure. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to uh, just remove the spotlight for one second. And I'm going to go into the gallery view so I can see everybody. Perfect. And uh, is it too intrusive? I know everyone's in the zone here. Can we do like a quick hold up of our pieces? That's what I'd, I was love say. To, <laughs> I'd love to see them all. Here, I'll show you what I did. Ooh, oh my God, I love it. Okay, and you have to freeze for one second so I can do a screen capture. I don't know how I'm going to do this and hold everything. But I'm going to do my best. It really looks like a children. All right, are you ready? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you I so love much. It. Now I got to see everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Pam. What's your daughter doing? Can we see her piece? Is she painting? Yeah, she sure is. Oh, yeah. Can I just, yeah, can we see, please? Yeah, this is, oh gosh, this is Avery. Oh, very nice. Wow. Hi, Avery. Avery's my 11 year old. <laughs> very, very nice. Thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> it's great. I'm so glad. <laughs> Beautiful. Really Perfect. Nice. So I, I know it's getting late, but I, uh, I invite you, um, you know, to either continue plugging away and you can sit with us for a little while longer if you have to go and are going to continue later on. That's also very cool, um, but thank you for spending your evening with us. Kind of our own personal paint night. I really, I really loved it. Thank you, Frederica. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, it's, it's such a pleasure and I'm just grateful to be able to share this with you. I Perfect, really and all, all of you Bloom group, we'll see you to early, bright and early tomorrow morning at eight. Yay. <laughs> be, I like when my days are sort of like sandwiched by Frank, it's great. <laughs> it's true you start with it and you end with it it's lovely <laughs> and thank you all for sharing and for sharing and for sharing your work and emmy it's great <laughs> so don't worry <laughs> thank you <laughs> no really it is it's fantastic i'm proud of all of you it's amazing <laughs>